We're getting nothing done, my friends. We're getting nothing done. It was a few days before the historic Obamacare repeal vote, and Republicans desperately needed John McCain. It was a dramatic and consequential return for John McCain to the Senate floor. What a dramatic morning this is turning out to be, with John McCain making that surprise return to Washington. And McCain's vote is going to give leadership a lot more breathing room. But the maverick of the Senate had just been diagnosed with terminal brain cancer, and he was playing hard to get. We've been spinning our wheels on too many important issues because we keep trying to find a way to win without help from across the aisle. But would he vote with his party or would he defect? I will not vote for this bill as it is today. This was the kind of moment that John McCain lives for. He is going to be the deciding vote, and he's got control of a major piece of legislation in his hand. Senator John McCain, really historic moment, trying to set a new tone when it comes to fixing our health care system. When you go against the grain in Washington, you get a lot of attention. Shutting down the government injured the people of my state. Why? Why would we want to do that? John McCain had a big ego, and he liked the attention. But also, I do think that the maverick aspect to McCain was real. He saw a lot of the things that went on in Washington as, you know, semi-idiotic or corrupt. I think the Congress of the United States, both Republicans and Democrats, should be ashamed of themselves. These may be worthy projects. They may be. Generally, they aren't. How many more lawmakers, staffers, government officials, and contractors have to go to jail before we actually fix this process? He liked challenging authority and maybe part of that is just growing up in a in the military family and having all that a military experience where you're subject to so much authority i have trouble with this more than two syllable words in the political phase of his life and he was willing to step up take a chance and shake up the system 11 million people live in the shadows and they live here in de facto amnesty and by god they are being exploited every single day of course, he switched back and forth uh, when it suited his politics. We will secure the borders first when I am president of the United States. I am proud that Republicans are the party of lower taxes. I cannot in good conscience vote in favor of tax cuts. There's been so many John McCains over the years. He came to Congress as this exalted war hero who'd already had a national reputation because of his time as a POW in Vietnam. McCain was shot down, held for years in terrible conditions in the Hanoi Hilton. He had a high profile because of his father. The Commander-in-Chief of our Pacific Forces, Admiral John S. McCain, Jr. As you know, we are living in a troubled world. They knew that they had something of a celebrity prisoner there. He was tortured, subjected to really unthinkable experiences. He resisted and resisted, but ultimately did make a confession. I, as a U.S. Airman, am guilty of crimes against the Vietnamese country and people. That really haunted him through the rest of his life. He felt that he had caved and betrayed his country. When he returned from Vietnam to much acclaim, he was an ambitious guy, and he quickly turned to politics. John McCain. A name Arizonans are talking about. He ran for the House, came in as a pretty conventional conservative, somebody who wanted to get on board the Reagan revolution. Speaker, like a poor fellow who brought his horse to water but could not make it drink, Walter, Walter Mondale proposes to throw more tax money at the deficit with little chance of making it shrink. But there was a watershed moment coming for John McCain. A major congressional scandal. The Keating Five scandal. Charles Keating, a millionaire banker who has come to embody the savings and loan scandal. A group of senators, bipartisan group, had interceded on behalf of a big businessman and they tried to help him out of a regulatory problem. It was a big scandal at the moment because the SNL crisis was huge back then. You swear under oath to this committee you were unaware of that at the time. McCain was ultimately cleared of any wrongdoing. But I understand why the committee made the arrangements they did. He thought it besmirched his honor, which is probably the most important thing to John McCain besides his family, is his honor. This was a searing experience for McCain. 
and it really helped shape his later image as a maverick because he immediately became someone, I think, who wanted to shake up the system and rein in the influence of money in politics. There's too much money washing around, and this money makes good people do bad things and bad people do worse things. John McCain was ready to do that. His party really wasn't. They liked the campaign system the way it was, particularly Mitch McConnell. To effectively discuss issues in this country, uh, one must have access to money. He was the leading foe of John McCain. So McCain had presidential ambitions. 2000 seemed like a, a good opportunity for him. This was the year of the famous Straight Talk Express. He was really letting it hang out in a lot of ways. If I were a tree, I would be a... If I were a tree, I would be a... root. What does that mean? I'd be glad to tell you. But he ran into a real buzzsaw with the Bush family and Karl Rove. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right, let the Bush campaign did some really tough negative advertising. McCain's campaign is crawling with lobbyists. His conservative hometown paper warns, It's time the rest of the nation learns about the McCain we know. McCain was stung when he came back to the Senate. You could tell. Gentlemen. Senator John McCain, the Republican, and Senator Barack Obama. The In 2008, this was really John McCain's last opportunity. He took the nomination, but he was really in trouble from the start. Obama, the celebrity candidate. The economic collapse. The fundamentals of our economy are strong. Picking Sarah Palin as his running mate. This is absolutely overwhelming. People really question John McCain's judgment on that. Even at the end, McCain was still fighting the leaders of his party. Yesterday, I received a call from President Putin of Russia. Being cozy with the Russians, pulling back in Asia. To John McCain, this was anathema. He wouldn't mention Trump by name, but he would talk about failures of American foreign policy and the conduct. To refuse the obligations of international leadership for the sake of some half-baked, spurious nationalism cooked up by people who would rather find scapegoats and solve problems. This was amped up more after the diagnosis of brain cancer. I think that was also part of his vote on the health care repeal. At the climactic moment, he walked out onto the floor, turned thumbs down, and killed the repeal effort. It was one of his last big acts as a U.S. senator. Breaking news in the 11th hour. The resistance to President Trump had its biggest victory yet. This is a major defeat. You could look at this one moment like a Renaissance painting. It was unbelievable. Kane wasn't going to go quietly.